It's me, Mary, from a girl, a book, and a mom. And I'm here, kind of early in the month. It's only February 3rd. I'm on a mission uh, to tell you what I read in January. Now, January has actually been a pretty productive month for me. Um, I've been uh, turning over some new leaves, uh, trying to be a better version of myself. Because, I mean, I'm pretty awesome, but there's no sense in not improving if you can. So I've been working on incorporating uh, some of the fly ladies technique of like loading the dishwasher at night and running it and then emptying it in the morning while waiting for my coffee. Little things like that. Focusing on cleaning my house a little. Uh, I just ordered a treadmill. So we'll see how good I am at that. Uh, but anyway, one of my leaves that I'm... Leaves? leaves not leaves that I'm turning over is uh, being more present on my YouTube channel uh, so that's what's going on here uh, so let's get to the books <music> nine books uh, this January. Uh, a couple of them I finished from December because December was uh, December was crazy. Nutty. Um, so let's start with the December books that I read that I finished in January and the first one of those is Aru Shah and the End of Time and this is by Roshani Chukshi and basically, it's the story of a seventh grade girl in Spider-Man pajamas who's a little bit of a liar, and that's Aru. Um, and she, on a, on a dare that's captured on video, uh, she lights a lamp which sets forth a pretty bad demon. And uh, what's really interesting about this book that I really enjoyed because it's a Rick Riordan Presents and he wrote the Percy Jackson books which is um delves a lot into Greek mythology yes Greek mythology um so what I like about this because I'm familiar with Greek mythology I really don't care the girl is like Greek mythology is my life um but she delves Aru um there's a lot with Hinduism and the different gods in Hinduism and so that was really interesting to me apart from the fact that it is a really fun and fast-paced uh, novel it's middle grades I wish the girl would read it so she could give you a review and if you're following the book list Queen 2022 reading challenge you'll note there is a bird on the cover of this one so Super good book. Very enjoyed it. Because, you know, English, it's my first language. Great book. I very much enjoyed it. Because sometimes I speak better than other times. Oh, well. Uh, the next book I read was on uh, the Kindle app on my phone. Uh, when I had down moments sitting at the dentist's office waiting for them to fix a tooth that mysteriously broke or I randomly noticed that I had a broken tooth um you know moments like that uh it was called The Wise Ass um by Tom McCaffrey and uh the girl got very upset and she said that I should stop swearing but really it's about a wise ass like a, a smart donkey uh and I got to admit, the title is sort of why I read the book. Um, but I'm really glad I did because this book was unlike anything I have ever read before. It's a comedy. It's um, what could be known as hilarious. Hey! Sorry. I have a dog. A naughty dog. <clears throat> so, here's the naughty dog. She's such a good dog. Look at this dog. 
in her pink camo sweater. Yes. Uh, so, I read The Wise Ass, The Smart Donkey, by uh, Tom McCaffrey. And it's about this, um, this mafia lawyer who handles, like, money laundering, you know, uh, mild mafia stuff. Okay, okay, mommy's on video. Stop, stop. And he um, turns witness protection and gets sent to Montana, uh, where he meets the smart donkey and Claire. Claire's the name of the donkey. Uh, mule? I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, uh, the whole thing goes delightfully off the rails. Uh, it's, I don't think I can tell you what happens because, or even the kind of people he meets because all of that would be a spoiler. It is like, uh, I believe on the front of the book it says it's like Grisham on mushrooms. And I think that's an accurate interpretation. It got a little silly. Uh, the first half of the book was a little boring. In the second half, um, I read that really quickly because it just was a mile a minute action. And uh, yeah, it was good. Uh, I had a good time with it. Uh, it's not Pulitzer Prize winning. It's It was fun though. It was good. Uh, the next book that I finally finished, and this was a terrific book. This was my woke book um, for December. And it's Dear White Peacemakers, Dismantling Racism with Grit and Grace by Oshita Moore. Um, and I listened to this on audiobook, and I loved it. Like, I'm seriously considering buying the actual book to have it, to reread it, to uh, more thoroughly digest the information that uh, it's, she is a black pastor who um, wants us to get away from the divisiveness of, of, uh, I don't even know how to say it. It's just, she uses uh, general Christian themes. It's uh, no dogma in this. Uh, that it, It's basically we are all beloved by God and we are uh, brothers and sisters. And so that we need to extend love and to be there for people. And what I love about this book is that there's no, no blame. That the, the anger and the grief comes through. But it's not anger at me because I'm a white person. Even though I, I totally understand that that anger is is justified. That, that white people have systemically, as a society, um, been not great. Uh, not me personally, but as a society. So I understand that, uh, that anger. Um, and I am incredibly grateful that Oshita Moore wrote this book, that I can understand uh, a way to go forward that I am not being insensitive and that I, I can help as opposed to uh, because of my uh, awareness of the situation, it makes me sort of not want to act because I don't know if that's the right way to act and I get all anxious about it and this book oh my gosh I cannot recommend this book enough so so there you go I loved that book um and at the end of every not maybe not every but most sections might be chapters there's a breath prayer and I like that it's God focused and I like that it's it's not excusing racial injustices, but it's not blaming. Uh, well, it it's not, it's accessible to me in a way that I can understand. Um, and I like that there are things in this book that I didn't realize were racist. I always love when things get pointed out to me that I have to think about 
to understand how that's part of what's causing the situation. Uh, so it's, um, it was really good, so much to think about, and I, I really, really liked it uh, because I do want relations between all people to get better. So, um, so there you go. That finished my year of woke reading, uh, which hopefully video coming out soon on that one. Um, the next book I read. <laughs> is When the Elephants Dance, and this is by Tess Eureza Holtha, and it's the story of the Philippines, Manila. Um, yeah, the Philippine Islands um, during World War II, and it's really, it took me a while to get into it, and um, it reminded me of Gabriel Garcia Marquez, who, not my favorite author, but perhaps I should give him another shot. Uh, I read Love in the Time of Cholera, and I almost wish that I could catch cholera so I could finish reading the book. Um, but, but this book, When the Elephants Dance, uh, I picked this up because somebody had recommended it, and I apologize, I don't remember who, uh, but also the buzzword reading challenge has continued into 2022 and the prompt for January was one of the question words like who, what, where, when, how. And so I went with when. And this is a library book. It's wildly overdue because that is how I do library books. Uh, but it's a story of these Filipinos who are um, hiding in a basement because uh, the Japanese have invaded. Well, the Americans were there and then they left and then the Japanese invaded and now MacArthur has come back to take back the Philippines. And so it's ugh, horrible. These Their homely was pretty much destroyed. But they're hiding in a basement and as they're hiding, they're telling stories to pass the time at the same time as they're trying to survive. And uh, so it's a mix of historic fiction and magical realism. And I really liked it. And one of the things I really like is the title. And the title comes from a saying that they have that when the elephants dance, the chickens are nervous, and uh, which makes sense. And in this case, the elephants would be Japan and America, these big superpowers and uh, Manila and the Philippines where the chickens that they were just trying to survive uh, through the whole thing. And uh, I'd love to tell you this is a five star read, but uh, some of the descriptions of war were a little graphic, which I'm a chicken. So I should be nervous when elephants dance, but but overall, a good book, and if gory war scenes don't bother you, pick it up. It's uh, it's a little slow going in the in the beginning, but once I got sucked into the story, it was really good. Uh, so this was a four star. Um, Oshita Moore was a five star. The Dear White Peacemakers, The Wise Ass, I think, was a four star, and Aru Shah was another five star. So. Not a bad beginning. Um, the next book I read was also on audiobook, and this was Working Stiff by Annalisa Ryan. And it's about a woman, Maddie, who is a nurse, an operating room nurse, to be close to her husband. Um, she used to be an ER nurse. Once they got married, they both worked in the OR. Uh, but because they didn't want to mix uh, personal and work life, they uh, had alternating schedules. So, uh, so yeah. So, she brought him like a basket of treats and snacks because he was going to be working late and discovered uh, he was having a little bit of a, um, of a little romp an adult situation um, 
with his, uh, with a different OR nurse. And so she packs her stuff, moves out, and moves in uh, to this cottage on her best friend's property, which happens to be next door, uh, and starts working for her best friend as a, um, in the medical examiner's office, and then she starts working as a uh, deputy coroner or something like that. And so then the next body they find that's dead just happens to be this other nurse who her husband was involved in and so she's trying to figure out who did it and she's claiming it's part of her job except really she wants it not to be her ex-husband uh so this was a hilarious fun mystery um i had a really good time with it um yeah i gave it five stars um then I read um, Game On by Janet Ivanovich, Tempting 28. Um, Janet Ivanovich is one of my favorite authors. Uh, and true to form, it was a quick read. I mean, I did get it in large print so I can read it without contacts. And basically, nobody puts a hold on the big print books. Uh, but it's not a huge book. Uh, and true to Janet Ivanovich form, uh, it's a Stephanie Plum mystery. This one Diesel shows up in. Of course, Morelli and Ranger end up in it. And uh, they're hunting a, um, a hacker uh, as brilliant as he is ruthless. Um, and then this diesel guy is also involved in it. Uh, he's like an international bounty hunter sort of guy. I don't know. Anyway, super fun book. Exactly what you would expect in the Stephanie Plum mystery. So then the next book I read and, um, is Arsène Lupin, Gentleman Burglar. How do you like that? My French accent. I am far better at speaking French than speaking with a French accent. Usually I sound Eastern European potato farmer when I try to sound like I'm from Paris, so I will stop that. Um, Arsène Lupin, I um, read because my brother suggested it because he said that it was a fun series and uh that there was something on netflix about it but uh the other wonderful thing about this book other than it's basically it reminded me of encyclopedia brown mysteries because you always find out how it happens at the end of each snippet and some of these are are told by arsene lupin himself it's like a, a series of um, vignettes, there's a French word for you, uh, or little short stories um, about this guy burgling. And uh, the other thing I really like, and, and this is one of the reasons why I was like, aha, is uh, the Bookless Queens 2022 reading list is said, uh, says, suggests, has a prompt that says um, you should read a uh, author with the same initials as you. So this is written by Maurice Leblanc. There I go again with that French accent, where ML is actually my initials. So hooray, because this was a super enjoyable little book. Um, nothing of too great of substance, nothing that you would use to actually figure out how to commit a burglary although um really good so i think that was the last that is that is the last physical book i read this month but really honestly almost half my books were physical books that might be a record um the next book i read was on audible back and forth and back and forth on my commute and it's the personal librarian by marie benedict and Victoria Christopher Murray. And if I were to have a woke book this month, um, this would be it. Because it's about Belle DeCosta Green, 
who was the personal librarian for J.P. Mir J. P. Morgan. I better wet my whistle a little. Okay. So, J.P. Morgan built the Pierpont Library, and he started collecting rare collections of books and early editions, and he had a couple Gutenberg Bibles, and Belle de Costa Green became known as someone who had impeccable taste, and uh, J.P. Morgan basically just passed everything over to her that she was really in charge of procuring the items, that she went to auctions, and a lot of times she would sneak in before somebody and, uh, like, snap it up before uh, anybody else had a chance uh, to bid on it. And uh, so that was really interesting, like, that part of it. But what's the most interesting part is that Belle de Costa Green was actually born... Belle Marion Greener, and her father was the first African-American man to graduate from Harvard. And um, once he had graduated from Harvard, he and his wife went to South Carolina to teach. And it was in this very brief moment in time before um, the Ku Klux Klan raised their ugliness. And it was, uh, they lived in the same uh, in a duplex right next to uh, like a, another white professor uh, that he taught white students that it was really a point where it was like racially integrated and then uh, he started to get death threats and um, they ended up moving to New York and Bell's mother was actually part of the Washington, D.C. Uh, free black people elite. And uh, so she had always come from this higher station. Um, the mother had. And so they moved to New York and the mother made the decision that they would be white passing. Because most of them were really uh, pale skinned. And... Uh, and so she made that decision, and that was that. They got rid of the Marion. They called her Belle de Costa Green and said that her olive complexion was because she had a Portuguese grandmother, which I was kind of like, uh. But anyway, um, it was just a really interesting uh, story of how... Uh, Bell navigates that serious tightrope of being able to participate in the white world without um, exposing herself. And um, there were several occasions where I was like, uh oh. And then um, I, but it's really. It was just fascinating that things that I wouldn't have expected her to worry about came into play. Like, um, like in the vanishing half, uh, the one twin who, who decides to be passing, she gets married and has a baby. Whereas Belle de Costa Green is like, I can never get married because I don't know if my child would come out light skinned enough. And having to come to grips with that she's light-skinned because of of um, barbaric uh, acts upon her ancestors. So, I mean, it, it dealt a lot with that, and um, it was really, really good. So that's another one I... Oh, that isn't the last one I read. Uh, that's another one that I really enjoyed. That was a five-star for sure, and I recommend you check that one out. Um, that was a library book on my, uh, Libby app, so I could listen to it. Uh, the next book I read on my Kindle app in one day, and it's An Elderly Lady is Up to No Good, uh, by Helene Turston. Um, and I read this on my Kindle, and it's basically, it's a little old lady set in Sweden, which, uh, 
I love the antics of little old ladies stuck in Sweden um, who become criminals. And uh, basically, um, like the little old lady who broke all the rules, which is another really fun book, she just becomes an art thief. Uh, but this little old lady, she becomes a murderer. Like she just, people annoy her. There's somebody after her apartment. Everybody gets killed. Anybody who bothers her gets killed. What a way to lead a life. Fantastic. Uh, super fun series of short stories again. Um, definitely recommend it. Four stars. Anyway, that's what I've been reading. Have you read any of these books? Uh, tell me about it. What were your thoughts on it? What was your favorite book of January? Um, let me know. Like and subscribe uh, because I would love that. And I am going to try to make more videos this this year. So that's uh, one of the leaves. Leaves. Leaves? I think it's leaves. L-E-A-V-E-S. Um, anyway, hope you're doing great staying out of these blizzard conditions that we're having. Um, it's actually illegal right now to go driving. Uh, not that I have anything to go drive to get. Uh, the girl is safely at her dad's and me and the puppy, the puppy and I, are uh, just chilling. So anyway, time to snuggle up with a good book. Happy reading.